Hey and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at how to do some green screening. Uh, when you do record your green screen footage it's a good idea to make sure the actor or the object stays within the green area. As you can see here the actor's hand leaves. Uh, so what that means would have to do some rotoscoping. If you don't already know what rotoscoping is you may already have done it in the past. Um, it's just essentially going frame by frame and animating a mask around the hand to make sure that stays in the final, uh, the final shot. Um, I'll just quickly show you now how that's done. So essentially create a mask, turn on automatic keyframing and then just go frame by frame forward and um, moving the positions of the, the mask. It's not particularly hard, it's just um, annoying and time consuming. So it's a good idea to make sure the hand stays within the green screen. Uh, the green screen footage I'm working with today is going to, it won't have that problem. So the actor stays within the green screen. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you're in cycles. And you also want to make sure this percentage slider is, is at 100%. If you don't do that, the masks later on might not fit, so it's a good idea to keep that at 100. Then we can go ahead and change to the node editor. And then we want to change this over to the scene tab by pressing this button here. And as always, we want to use nodes and click backdrop. So this is our composite. Let's just move this out of the way. Anything plugged into here will be rendered. The render layers here we don't actually need, so we can press X and delete that one. So we want to shift A and go to input. And you can add in a movie clip or an image sequence. I'm using an image sequence. Um, Blender works better with image sequences, but you can use either one and it will work fine. If you, are, if you are using an image sequence, just press A to select all of these and then import. Then just drag over the node over here and then left click to place that down. Okay, so now we want to uh, preview this. And since we've enabled the backdrop, we can go ahead and shift A, go to output. Then we're going to go down to viewer and we can add a viewer node. If you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can just press control left click, uh, control shift and left click on any node and have that previewed. Over here you can uh, move things around and we can press fit to fit the screen. If you want to move things as well, you can do that too. Just checking these settings here and you can also change the start and end frame if you want to. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay, so we want to um, get rid of the things around the side before we worry about the green screen. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. We can create um, a couple of mask nodes. Go to matte and then box node. And as you can see, it's just got a little box around here. And we can move this on the X value and then increase the width. Just move over a little bit and increase the height. Then you can just duplicate this node and then just move it over. But I'm going to delete that and I'm going to create my masks uh, the other way, which is just changing this over to the movie clip editor. Then if you're already using a movie clip, you can select this icon here and choose your movie clip. But since I'm using an image sequence, I need to reload that in again. So I'm just going to open one image. I don't need to open the whole thing. Okay, so if you've created masks here before, you already know how to do this. That's fine. Just create a mask. Um, we need to change this over from the tracking mode to the masking mode. And if we hit control and then left click, we can just place a couple of markers around here. If you want, you can create a box and then just go over and create the other box. But I'm just going to uh, make this one whole shape. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> just being lazy, I guess. So if you want to close it, you press Alt-C to close that. And then what we're going to do is just tighten these up, make sure they're pretty much at the edge. In case the arm seems to move over, we don't want to mask the arm out or anything. You might want to play through the video footage as well. Make sure if your actor is moving to see where the mask is. Make sure the mask doesn't go over the actor as well. So let's just rename this garb since it's going to go into the garbage. Um, and then we can change this back over to the node. Editor. Okay, so now let's focus on the green screening. Um, as you can see, this green screen has got creases. It's got some shadows. But it, this is going to work fine even with those problems. So we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so go Shift A, go to Matte, and a lot of these nodes work really well for different situations, but we're going to be using the Keying node. So select that one, and let's just drop this on here. Okay, so if we preview this now, so just connect this up to the viewer, <laughs> it messes up. And the reason why it does that is because the target color is white, and we want to change that. But before we do that, we want to select this original node and plug that back into the viewer so we see the original untouched node. 
uh, sorry, the, the original untouched image. Now we select this color here and select this color picker tool. And what we want to do is get a sample of this. So I'm going to press left click, drag down and let go. And what that's done is just took a sample of the highlights, midtones and shadows. So now if we plug that back into the view, you can see it does a good job. It's not perfect right now, but it does a good job of getting rid of the green. Now I like to click the color again, and this time uh, select that point and just drag it closer to the center circle. So I clicked it where it was, and I've just uh, started dragging it closer to the center. And as you can see, um, it gets rid of all that green. Um, again, you don't want to go too close to the center circle because it will, um, <laughs> it will give you some trouble, but um, you can push that pretty much to its limit. So what we need to do now is just get rid of those sidebars. So let's just go to Shift A, Input, Input Mask. Just get rid of those uh, the garbage around the side. So we want to choose the garbage map and plug that into the garbage input there. And as you see, it just gets rid of all the garbage stuff we didn't want. The one underneath the core map that is uh, it works if you've got a green badge or a green object on the actor and you don't want to get rid of it. You just create a new mask, plug that into the core map, and uh, that stays. So there's another thing we need to fix is the color spill. So Shift A, go to Matte, and then Color Spill. Plug that here. As you can see from standard, it works quite well. We we'll just delete that first. Uh, I just want to go back, and if you do have problems with your matte, if it doesn't look like this, and you've got some dark spots, you will need to clip black and clip white. So if you clip the black, the black areas will get darker. If you clip the white, the white areas will get brighter and it'll get rid of any artifacts that you might have. Again, in this example, it's quite good, so it's hard to demonstrate what that is. But if you do have trouble, clip the blacks and whites. If you do need to refine the edge, we need to go to the dilate erode node. So you can just um, increase and decrease this. If I just switch back over to the image, just show you how it works. Yeah, if you've got a rough edge, you can just uh, erode it. Just get rid of it. Now we just go to back to zero, uh, and it's the same thing for feathering. If you want to feather that edge, you can decrease that, and it will make it feathered. So again, every example, every uh, project you'll be working on will be different. So I mean, it's hard to say use these exact um, values. So just just play around with it, and you'll find something that works for you. So we throw that color spill back on. Um, it gets rid of that color spill as you can see here. You may need to change the colors or the channels because again each example is different and um, but from standard this works fine. Now we've got the same settings here which is this node. These three top settings or these top values are pretty much that node. So if you want more control you can play around with these values and um, despill the color how you want. Um, Again, I'm not too sure how the exactly works. I know the, the first one is the color, so if you increase that, it gets rid of the color or decrease it, it brings more of the original color back. Um, the factor is how much it is, and I'm not sure about the balance. I think, again, that's kind of the um, maybe the fade or the, the fall off of the effect. But again, the color spill works fine for me, so I just throw on a color spill, and that works great. Um, it's not finished yet, so there's a few more things we need to do. Go to Shift A, go to Color, and Mix plug them in and as you can see there's got like a white line here and down here and down here and I think that's down to the feathering that we did but if you just want to create another mask you can get rid of that by the same way we create the first mask it's not a big deal but I'm not sure if we even see it in the final example anyway and um, we want to make sure this is on the bottom input and it looks like this and then we want to shift A go to input and again you can use an image or you can use a movie clip or an image sequence you can use whatever you want for this example, I'm going to use a movie clip. Just going to open this. And if you want to use this movie clip too, um, you, I'll throw a link in the description. You can go ahead and download that. Plug that into the top input and nothing changes because we need to check the alpha box. And there you go. Again, it's not perfect because we need to color correct it. Um, but there you, there's essentially green screening. If you play through it as well, that's always a good idea to play through your footage to uh, make sure if there's any lighting changes or any noise or anything like that, you can uh, see what's different. But, um, we want to color correct this now so we can see that the, the contrast and brightness is completely out and the color tint as well. So RGB curves, plug this in here. I'm going to fix the contrast. And again, for ex different examples will be different values. So you just play around with it until you find something that works with your two examples. So. This looks good for this contrast here. Shift A, do the same thing for this other video. Let's give this a bit of contrast. Like 
like so. Um, as we can see there's some blue on the, the actor's face so we just want to increase the blue for the background as well. Give this a blue tint. And what you could do is go back to the actor's RGB here and um, go back and reduce the blue if you wanted to. But this is without and this is with. So the colour correction just to try and blend them to a little bit better. Then you can go ahead and add some colour grading. Again this is not a tutorial on how to colour grade but I'm just going to show you this is where you would put the nodes. Use whatever nodes you want and give this a look to however you want it to look but then you can go ahead and render it out so you want to make sure your frame rate is uh, set to the frame rate of the video and also your 100% for your percentage your resolutions correct as well and then the file format so if you want to save this as a video you can save this as an FFmpeg video or if you want to save this as an image sequence go ahead and do that too it's entirely up to you uh, last thing we need to do is probably set the output, set the destination of this video, and then uh, go ahead and give that a render. So hopefully this tutorial helped. Uh, if it did, be sure to give it a like, and as always, thanks for watching.